it's Cambo, and welcome to the show. Uh, as we lead up to Christmas, there are a lot of things going on, different charities, but we like to focus on something that's a little bit different. We've had Candy Grandchamp on, of course, with her Show Me Your Undies thing, Underwear for the Homeless. And my guest today is David Lowry uh, with uh, Club Fantasy. Right. And this is a board game uh, for for the, the less, or for the needy. Or the, yeah, for kids that don't uh, get any presents uh, for Christmas. And I've worked in that industry now for four or five years. And um, throughout the year, my girlfriend and I, we do all kinds of things for charity, different charities. And um, I thought, well, four years ago, I thought, well, I'm just gonna try this. I'm just gonna throw this out there to the industry and see what happens. And it was like the day after Thanksgiving, and uh, ended up getting like 300 games or something. It just wow. blew me away because I thought like I'd get like 30. Yeah. And um, it's just kind of grown. And this is our fourth year, and we've raised uh, somewhere between three and four thousand games and over seventy thousand dollars worth. That's amazing. That really is amazing. And people don't think of board games so much anymore. It's video games and everything's digital. How important are board games for kids? They're incredibly important. Um, number one, it's family time, yeah. right? And so I'm, I'm all about the family time. Number two, uh, I think as a community, we have kind of a responsibility to include people and uh, not ignore the extraneous things that are going on and warning yeah. signs. And, and when we see all the things going on in the country, whether it be mass shootings or bullying or whatever, a lot of this is, is born from people who feel like they have no place, who are lonely, who are depressed. And um, for me, bringing board games, you know, out to the schools and out to the teen centers and teaching in classes allows me to get to know these kids, talk to them, you know, see if we can communicate and connect on some level. It, and I think everybody can do that. It's neat because today it's it's very difficult getting a family around a table for a meal. Right. But a board game might be an easier do. And and today's board games are so much different than the ones we grew up with. Yeah. Not to knock the ones that we grew up with, but um, there isn't a lot of player elimination in today's games. Some are very, very social. Um, they, you know, they range anywhere from 15 minutes to seven hours, but you know, the sweet spot nowadays is, is 20 to 60 minutes in length. and. Um, they're, they're very engaging, they're very intuitive. Uh, a lot of them become very educational while maintaining a, a lot of fun. So it's it's a much easier way to get people into it. And there isn't a person that doesn't come do a game night wherever I'm at that doesn't walk away thinking they want to buy some games. Nice. I remember when I was a kid, uh, when I turned 16, one of my friends got me Risk. And the hours we would play that Mm -hmm. You know, we get four or five guys together and just sit around the house and play riffs. Right. And you're socializing and you're learning stuff. And then in 84, when Trivial Pursuit came out, right. yeah. I was right there to get the very first edition. And I was in college and we used to take that game anywhere. We yeah. could take it to the beach. We have marathons and tournaments at people's houses. Four Family games. championships. Yes, yes, yes. We're dating ourselves a bit, but yeah. <laughs> uh, but board games are can be really fun, and it, it seems like they've gone by the wayside. Well, it, what's interesting is, is there's actually over the last ten years been a big resurgence, and um, uh, I think over the last ten years, I haven't looked too much this year, but every year has been an upswing as far as sales go. And last year we hit 1.5 billion in sales for the first time ever. Wow. So they're gaining in popularity. And I think part of that is due to the uh, new wave of these designer games uh, where you can take a game like Risk and really good designers can, can crunch that down into a 20 minute game now. Uh, and it can be something that you can put on your coffee table. Yes. You know, so there are things that uh, have really come a long way as far as uh, design goes and uh, increasing the amount of, uh, or I should say, decreasing the amount of time between turns if you're going to get bored. Uh, I remember when Dungeons and Dragons came out mm -hmm. and how, ever, you know, there was an, always that element of society saying how evil it was and right. that they expected 
your kid to wake up in the middle of the night spitting pea soup and right. head spitting around. <laughs> yeah, I live through that. that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. We still we still joke about that. Um, what's odd is four years ago, uh, Dungeons and Dragons released their fifth edition, and it's been the best selling edition of any RPG ever. Well, Dungeons and Dragons, it's a role playing. Yeah, it's a role playing game. Yeah. And with uh, Stranger Things coming out a couple years ago, it's kind of picked that popularity back up. And now we have requests from schools uh, to teach. Dungeons and Dragons, and they're, they're they're forming classes and little clubs all over the country, let alone Nashville. So it's not just chess clubs. No, no, no. I do a, <laughs> I do a board game thing at uh, Rocket Town every Monday, and right now we are teaching Dungeons and Dragons. And then Tuesdays I'm at Stratford High School, and we're doing board games there. And they they had a group that met in previous years for D and D, but now they want to start a new one again. So we're working on that. And then next month I'll be talking with 150 local librarians about. Uh, games and building their libraries and implementing programs. This has become almost a crusade for you. Uh, yeah. What struck that? What what led to that? Um, I think, <sighs> for me it was it was just seeing the, the technology come in and just take over everything, right? right? And, you know, I'm old enough to remember when we used to actually go outside and play and, and you know, do <laughs> and drink from the garden. That's right. Yeah. And do all that stuff. And as I got older, got married and had kids or whatever, um, nobody wanted to be around. They all wanted to be on their phone or on their tablet or on their computer. And um, I grew up playing games. Um, and in the late 90s, when we started to see this resurgence start again with uh, something called Euro board games like Settlers of Catan. Um, I got slowly back into it and, and kept playing and had a group that I would play with pretty often. So I wanted to bring that back into the family. And as I see things going on politically in the country, even within the board game industry, um, to me, the easiest way to uh, break all that up is to sit around the table, talk and have fun. And there's no better way to do that than with a game. You and your daughter are very close. Yes. In I see her, you, you post pictures of the two of you playing games and doing things together like that. And it just, I can see how happy that makes you. And, and she looks very happy about it too. She really likes it when she kicks my butt. So, <laughs> you know, she, uh, she grew up with games and she has her own little collection of games. And, um, you know, at first you're, you're, you're bringing them along and playing with them and, and helping them along. But by the time she was 10, 11, 12, she was so actively engaged and able to make critical decisions, you know, uh, uh, figure out strategies, adjust strategies on the fly, that she was regularly beating me in certain games. And I think that's pretty important too. And when we teach the games at the schools or wherever we're at, we're actually teaching these strategies as well. Mm -hmm. And some games are used by companies and even the Green Bay Packers to teach a uh, strategy and how to adjust on the phone. I, I, I saw a commercial recently where, I can't remember all three games, but the one was Monopoly, and it was saying, teach them how to handle money here before they have to go out in the real world. Mm -hmm. So you're talking about these critical decisions and getting kids to work in kind of a fantasy world with real life before they actually have to take on real life. Right. Um, th today, education is a big topic in games. As a matter of fact, there isn't a, a subject or topic that isn't covered in board games, but you can find games that specifically teach finance or stock market or science. I recently did a video called Pathogenesis, two videos for Pathogenesis that talks about virulent strains and, and how diseases work and all that kind of stuff. And um, about six years ago, a game called uh, um, Freedom of the Underground Railroad by Academy Games came out, which is a cooperative where everybody's on the same team trying to accomplish a goal. And that dealt strictly with slavery and how it was handled, and it's very historically accurate. It even comes with a book uh, that teachers can use as a guide in their classes to teach that game. And um, it's, it's incredibly important, especially, I think, even with finance, because being a former wealth manager, I know how bad we are at handling our money and how yeah. uneducated we are about handling our money. Yeah, so, complete spaz with money. Right. Yeah. So hand, having a game that, that can instill those kind of habits in a fun way, I think it's pretty amazing. So getting back to the charity, it's not just important that everybody should be playing these kind of games, but, but kids that don't have a lot 
can get a game and maybe from a disadvantaged neighborhood mm -hmm. where education isn't emphasized, they can learn through this and, and learn things like money and history, history and yeah. instead of having to believe what the machine is telling you. Absolutely. And, you know, I mean, I think like anything, you know, always, always be conscious of any bias, but uh, in the in the board games themselves, I haven't really found any. So I don't want to say just believe everything you see, but I haven't really found any. It certainly hasn't been my experience with um, academy games. They're very historically accurate, um, and you know it's a it's a thing where when you're when you're in those areas where you don't have a lot of money, you don't have a lot to do. This is a great way to get all those kids involved into doing something fun. Um, a lot of local libraries are having board game programs, so even if you don't. Have a lot of games yourself you can get involved that way um and uh, you know if nothing else you just contact me and we'll get you some games is it also people wanting to log off of digital i've been seeing that libraries are enjoying a bit of a resurgence board games are enjoying a resurgence uh, stuff that's not digital yeah and and i just read an article a day or two ago about how some some of the uh, video game people who love the RPG games are, are coming back to playing actual role-playing games and they're saying this is so much better than playing a video game and so much you know more fun and uh, there's a lot of that going on where people are just tired of constantly being plugged in and, and you know feeling anxious and that that you know if you're not constantly entertained and you know whatever so this is really kind of helping I think uh, overall you know, with the suicide rates climbing, right? With social media and the constant attacks and whatever. Kids are just constantly bombarded. Right, this is a great way to take a break from that and get away from that and connect with people. We are so unsocial as a society anymore. Yeah. This changed so much in the last 20 years. This is a great way to be social and do it in a fun way that, that, I mean, you can buy any one of these games and you can get online and find a video on it that'll teach you how to play it, right? right? And so you don't even have to read the rule book most of the time anymore, which is probably a good thing because some of them are pretty bad. Yeah. So, um, you know, it, it, it makes it, it makes entry into the game a lot, a lot easier. So you brought some games here. What, yes. what is King of Tokyo? King of Tokyo is, um, it's kind of like King of the Hill in board game form. And it's made by Richard Garfield and put out by Yellow Games. Um, and actually, this just won an Autism Award that was announced the other day, and I haven't had a chance to look in, into it. But this is one of my favorite games to teach families, especially that have uh, younger to middle-aged kids. It's a dice rolling game, and it's a game where kids get to talk smack to their parents a little bit and have a little fun because you get, get to beat, them, beat up on them a little bit. But everybody gets to be a certain monster. You roll some dice, and you try to attack you know, uh, everybody and be the last one standing, or the one, first one to get 20 points. But it's really easy to learn and it's a lot of fun. And this is probably one of the most requested games that I have when people come over or we're at a, a, you know, a, a place where we're teaching games. They always want to play King of Tokyo. And I can't tell you how many copies of this I've given away where I've had to go rebuy it myself. You know? <laughs> so that's a, that's, a, that's a fun one. I think um, I, I brought a few. Oops, that, it's all right. It's, I, I brought a few that um, are pretty good sellers. This is Pandemic by Z-Man Games. This has been out a while. This is a four player game that uh, you have to stop uh, diseases from taking over the world. Wow. And, it, and you can ratchet up the level of this. This is also a cooperative game where everybody's playing on the same side to, to make it happen. And there's different roles everybody plays that has different powers. Um, this again, is this is really about teamwork and um, getting people who are very alpha who want to take everything over to learn how to check themselves and keep themselves. That's you know, the thing with risk. It's yeah. like, yeah, I want to take over the world. Right. So this, you know, this is a great way to work on so many different, not only social skills, but critical thinking skills and teamwork. Uh, this one can last 10 minutes to maybe 40, 45 minutes long because it is a pandemic and if, if things get out of control, you could lose very quickly. Well, yeah, so that one's a lot of fun. Just like real life. Yeah, exactly. Um, I brought Potion Explosion from Simon Games. This is like Candy Crush in board game form. Oh, all right. So if you like those kinds of things where you know you got your little things that are rolling down and, and causing crushing things, that this is that this is that game of board game form. This is a lot of fun, really easy to learn. Um, it's 
got the, the, the tray and the rack and everything like that. So there's a little bit of uh, aesthetic appeal to it as well. And you got to try to create all these different potions in it and get the most points. And the nice thing about it is there's no in-app purchases. No. <laughs> so no you buy the purchase. game. And, you now, know. I will say a lot of these games nowadays, you know, as a sales tactic, is they put sales tactic is they like to make expansions. The expansions. So that is also one of the benefits of board gaming is, you know, it used to be that you'd play the game and you would get bored of it because it never really changes. Most of today's games are, have such a high replayability factor right. that even if you don't buy the expansion, you'll never get bored with it. Right. So that's another really Again, thing. Again, going back to Trivial Pursuit, they had the Genesis, but then mm -hmm. they came up with sports and entertainment. Right. Because eventually you learn all the yeah. answers, right? So and, they would do that. And, and now they have Disney versions and everything. Yes, yeah, so. it's crazy. And so I think the last one I'll show you real quick. So for those people who are into kind of, you know, hauntings and ghostly things, there's a game called Betrayal at House on the Hill. Um, and this is a game where you, uh, without the expansions of base games, you have like, I think it's 40 different, um, possible scenarios that you play through. Wow. And everybody starts as a character and you build the house as it goes. And you don't really know what you're doing or what the end result's going to be until somebody becomes the haunt. And then you find out what the ultimate goal of the game is. Oh, so you're going through the house trying to discover and find items and things like that. And all of a sudden, one of you is the bad guy, or possibly more than one of you is the bad guy. <laughs> so that's a lot of fun. And that's great. what's cool about this is sometimes people will do, you know, uh, what do they call them? Um, oh, I can't remember what it's called. They do with video games too, where people will add all these things in the, yeah. themselves, right? Well, recently I printed out the Scooby Doo version. So uh -huh. you can take House on the Hill there, how, uh, Betrayal of House on the Hill, and you can make it like a Scooby-Doo version of it and, you know, keep it maybe a little less scary for younger kids or a little more nostalgic. Nice. So that's, you know, kind of a cool thing there. But games now come in so many different forms, whether it be cooperative, strategic, social, um, uh, you know, you've got lots of uh, games that require dexterity. Right. right, so for people who don't do well sitting down for long periods of time trying to analyze something, we have just dexterity games. They focus a lot on colorblindness and autism and, and all kinds of things so that everybody can be engaged in gaming. That's great. That really is great. And yeah. uh, so if people want to donate games, how can they do that? Uh, easiest way right now to get to me is through Facebook, uh, through the Club Fantasy page. So it's Club Fantasy, F A N T A S C I, and contact me there, or they can always email me at david at the .com. Could people do something like uh, purchase a game through Amazon and have it delivered to you? They can, like they can do that. They can, uh, we'll pick it up wherever, you know, if you're local to the national area, I'll drive out and pick it up. And we're taking new and used games as well, as long as the used games are complete games. Because what we also do is we, uh, not only do we donate the games to the nonprofit for the kids, but we actually build game libraries for nonprofits that uh, have the kids there a lot or families there a lot. And uh, it, it allows them to do some family time when they're, you know, shelters and all kinds of things like that. We've built six large libraries in Nashville so far. Whoa. I, I really like you because you don't only just talk the talk, you walk the walk as well. You that's, back up everything you say. That's the key, I think, today. It, we talk a lot on, on social media, um, but we know statistically that most of us don't really do anything. And so my motto was do more, talk less. Yeah. yeah. Kind of like a wag more, bark less. <laughs> yes, exactly. Exactly. And it isn't to be, you know, any kind of, uh, uh, show any kind of, you know, superiority is just like nothing will change if we don't Unless make Unless somebody happen. actually steps yeah. up and tries to make change. And, and you're doing that with this. So congratulations. Thank you. I appreciate it very much. Here. Thank you for the interview. And oh, my pleasure. Uh, we'll have a link to Club Fantasy here on the show. Uh, and then you can contact David and make some arrangements. If you're in the local national area, he said he'll come and get it. If you're outside of the local national area and want to uh, do something through Amazon, you can get all the details for absolutely for how to do that. What's kind of the cutoff date for getting these out to people? Um, you know, uh, I deliver on uh, Christmas Eve and I've delivered on Christmas Day. Okay. So, you know, up until maybe the day before Christmas Eve is probably the last, unless you just want uh, the donations to go because we do this really all year long. Right. Yeah, so I mean, we can still donate later or we can donate to libraries and, um, you know, it, it, it will get used, I promise you. Thank you for being here. Thank you, thank you.
David Lowry, club fantasy uh, with his uh, board games. Uh, and, and you should check out board games for your family too. I guarantee you'll have a good time. Uh, I still love playing Risk and Trivial Pursuit. So I. It, it's never going away. I'll do it. Thanks for watching the show today. We'll see you right here next week. And uh, don't forget to catch me every Sunday at midday on Chris Country all across the UK following the Bobby Bones show. And on 88.9 Tamworth FM in Tamworth, New South Wales, Australia uh, with Jody Crosby and John Wolf Thursday mornings. And I'll have my pick of the week. We'll see you next time. Oh.